Mark Fixes Star So, a new purchase from eBay. Crack out the lager and let's play some Spectrum games. Ah, uh, we've all been here, haven't we? You've bought something off eBay and it doesn't work. Even though the advert said it worked when I packed it away and I can't test it, so I'm selling it as spares and repairs. Well, screw you, you dishonest eBay bastards. Screw you! I'm going to have to fix it myself now because this is Mark Fixes Stuff. And we're going to change the membrane in this ZX Spectrum Plus. Now, the first thing is there is a massive amount of screws in the Spectrum Plus. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And number eight is different. It's fluted and fits flush. How many screws? Well, we'll take the first one out. It's usually the one that I drop. So witness me as I drop this on the floor and it's never seen again. Oh, miracles do happen. And these round-headed screws come out of the case like this that's it now remember you're dealing with a 30 year old piece of plastic so don't go crazy on the screws use the right screwdriver there you go and we'll take that out there last one out of there and we'll be ready to open the machine up okay so flip it over dead quick move those screws out of the way and here she is lovely Right, lift the lid off gently so that you can see the ribbon cables. Ah, and immediately we can see that Mr. It Was Working When I Packed It Away has been subject to some kind of miracle. There should be religious excursions to his house because half of one of the ribbon cables is completely missing its conductive strips. Yeah, well what happens here is after 30 years the membranes get really fragile and they basically split and crack and they just don't work and it's really really common in the Sinclair computers so let's look at changing it now not content with all the screws in the outside of the case they've put a stonking 10 screws holding on this Kevlar shield which weighs twice as much as the rest of the computer together so we'll just start unscrewing these again use the correct screwdriver because this is the 30 year old piece of plastic now, I'm not going to make you watch me do all of this, so I'm just going to... It's a bit of a mind wipe. You'll lose a couple of minutes here, but you won't have to watch me doing all of that. That's it. It's like being abducted by aliens, isn't it? Woohoo! Last couple of screws coming out now. And we can take off this huge lump of metal. Which, if you weighed it in, is probably worth more than the spectrum. Yes, don't know what it's made of. Probably lead. I'm probably going to go blind now. Okay, and now there's a plastic shield. These seem to be different in every single Spectrum Plus that you open up. They can be thick plastic, thin plastic, some feel papery. And underneath that, you've got the membrane itself. This is utterly useless. It's all cracked and old. And to remove this properly, we need to remove these two collars, which will come off if you remove these two screws for each one. Now these clamps are very, very important because what they do is they hold together the three layers of this triple layer membrane. The reason this membrane's got three layers is because it's got more keys than the standard spectrum, but it's the same motherboard. It's exactly the same computer in a larger case. So um, let's have a look at this. This one is very, very brittle and they go brittle after 30 years because they have no UV protection and the emollient, the moisturiser, uh, effectively, in the plastic, um, leaches out. See, this one here looks very, very brittle. If I pull that, there, look, that just snaps off really, really easily. See how jagged that is. Um, this side, a little bit less brittle. You can see there the three layers with conductive um, sides on both in the centre, and they need to be held together. This is for resistance on the keys. Um, sometimes it's a very grotty. This one isn't too bad at all, actually. Um, 
so we'll put that to one side and here's the keys themselves don't worry these keys will not fall out if you give it a bit of a shake look they're actually hooked in if you want to take them out you need to push in what I call the S tabs and they will come out here's the enter key sometimes these can get a bit sticky so you can put a bit of grease around the three um, t-shaped legs okay let's fit the new membrane now this new one has come from rwap or sellmyretro.com and it is a brand new manufactured spectrum plus membrane these are brilliant they're uv protected um, they don't dry out and they'll last a lot longer than the original ones ever did um, I recommend getting these from sellmyretro.com because they are the best quality. I've had some cheap ones on eBay and they haven't fitted the posts, whereas these ones always have. Right, so first things first, we'll pop the, the well, I'm not sure what it's called, a bubble mat that resists on there. And every time we're looking for the holes to line up, there's also two location posts. Okay, and they're at either end become a little bit clearer as we go and put the membrane on okay so this is it misaligned so you know what that looks like and you'll know when it's lined up properly because you'll see these posts clearly through it so here we go let's line that up for you see the holes appearing and also you have two registration posts at the left and the right which so all the holes you can see them and registration post there on the left and there's the right one that pops through and that pops through all of the layers so you know when it's absolutely correct so next we'll put the insulating plastic layer on these are different in every single spectrum you open there's some are thick some are thin some are plastic some aren't some are papery there's the registration post so you know that it's lined up properly and now for the absolutely mahusive metal layer not sure what it's made of uh, probably lead so I'm probably going to go blind or mad now okay so that lines up there this thing is massive and heavy and uh, well anyway it's lined up two registration posts as well so it's in the right place and one screw in the center now you probably notice that I've been hovering above the desk holding this uh, whilst putting the layers on that's because if you lay it flat um, it presses all the keys upwards and pushes the layers off so once you've got your first one in you can pop it down on the desk and do the others right pop one in there remembering you only want to do this kind of finger tight you don't want to over tighten at all okay and that's the last one I'm so fast you don't even see me doing it yep right so I like to check the action of the keys before anything else just to make sure that mat hasn't slipped I mean it never has but it's a good idea and that's fine turn it back over and it's time to put the collars on it's absolutely essential you don't forget to do this because this is a three layer three layer membrane so without the collars those conductive tracks don't touch each other and it doesn't work and apparently it's the number one reason for working membranes being returned to sellmyretro.com so uh, do make sure that you put them on it's just two screws again finger tight 30 year old plastic so uh, don't overdo it you really are in trouble if you strip one of these but it's very very simple to just do it very very gently and make sure it's right some cases the um, the posts are slightly shifted so you might need to put a slight skew on one of the membrane tails to get it in but as long as it goes flat and you can get the screws in without going through the membrane tails then that's absolutely fine so pop him in there and that really is the most difficult part over and none of the process is particularly difficult those two collars back on wicked now let's put it all back together okay so bringing the lower half of the computer back in um, one thing to note here these things here which look like the springs out of um, Donkey Kong 
are actually tensioners for these feet. And they're like springs which basically put resistance onto the feet to stop them um, slipping inside the machine. They slip inside. So uh, make sure they're put back. Okay, so the tails now need to go into the KB1 and KB2 connector. If you get it the wrong way around, you're really, really not very clever. Pop them in firmly but slowly. You don't want to kink the cable. Although these are very robust membranes, you don't want to kink them. Um, and it's fairly simple. You know when they're in because they, they stop feeding in. If the cables won't stay in the slot, you might need a new set of Molex connectors. Again, you can get those from SellMyRetro.com as well, and they need to be soldered on. Right, so that's all back together like that. Turn it over and pop the screws in. I'm not going to make you watch that. I'm not going to make you watch me put the screws back. Am I? Should I? Should I? Do you want to watch that? Now, I thought you probably didn't want to watch me putting all eight of the screws back in. So uh, I've uh, done that now. Right, okay. So let's see. Does it work? Let's try it. Mono cable into the ear socket. My adapted cable into the RF output socket. And the all-important barrel plug for the power connector into the 9 volt DC socket. And click. It's working. Brilliant. Time for specky goodness. It's a good idea to actually check all of the keys and also check whether it's a 48k or 16k spectrum or if it has any memory faults. So down here is where you can find sellmyretro.com which is good for spares, membranes and all sorts of Sinclair goodies. Highly recommended. Up here is where you can find my video showing you how to load software super speedy into real spectrum hardware using your computer's sound card. And over here is where you can subscribe to get your fix. Subscribe. Subscribe. Don't be a crazy fool. Subscribe.